You might know him as Ty or Tyler. He's the leading role in one of the most popular shows ever, Dude Perfect. With 60 million subscribers on their YouTube channel, their trick shot and stereotype videos are legendary, with the channel having over 10 billion total views. They are a group of Christian friends from college that are friendly and very energetic, and our family loves their channel. They don't curse, there's nothing inappropriate, it's just good, clean, family-friendly fun. But recently, an interview came out of Tyler and his wife, Bethany, talking about the impact of huge success on a marriage and family. Tyler's testimony was a powerful one, and in it, he shared something very personal that I'm sure was hard to talk about. His struggle with pornography. We were, we were not in a good place, and um, I was struggling with pornography for a long time. Lust was always an issue for me, and the thing that got us through it was not only our faith played a major role, but the community that was around us. And we started a Bible study that meets every Thursday morning at my house that has been irreplaceable in my walk uh, to have those 11 guys that we can come together and, and be vulnerable with and getting in the Word of God, all of those different things. When you have a community of people around you, perspective can change in those situations. This is a struggle that is growing in America with 65% of young men and 18% of young women watching porn at least once a week. The median age of the first exposure to pornography is 14 years old. Parents, this is one reason why it is so important for you to know what your kids are looking at on their phones. The results of early pornographic exposure are disastrous now and in their future. Pornography destroys marriages. 50% of divorce proceedings cite obsessive interest in pornographic material. It is also commonly associated with depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. God made the sexual relationship to be exclusively between the husband and the wife. When pornography comes into the picture, the infidelity rate rises by 300%. In the Garden of Eden, God created Adam and Eve to be partners in life, to be helpers to each other. He also created them to be able to procreate and enjoy the blessing of children. The blessing that sex was supposed to be for Adam and Eve has become almost unrecognizable from what God intended. Even in Bible times, we see a whole chapter in Leviticus 18 on unlawful sexual relations. Specific guidance is given directly from God Himself to avoid sexual perversion and that word perversion is used. The New Testament is full of guidance on sexual behavior, what is sinful and what is not. We cannot be faithful to Scripture and not acknowledge that there is sexual sin. Look at the story of Joseph. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, and his response was, how can I do this and sin against God? In today's world, there are apps on your phone where you can find a stranger to have sex with that day. Having multiple sexual partners is not frowned upon. In fact, it's often glorified. What is usually not glorified, but is a reality for that lifestyle, are the sexually transmitted diseases that go along with that life. Basketball player Wilt Chamberlain claimed to have had sex with 20,000 different women. Can you imagine the diseases that were spread because of that behavior? What a complete misuse of what God made to be special. And how insulting to those women to be treated like a number a notch on his belt. You see, when we do what we want over what God tells us is best, we head down a very dangerous road. Where does it end? For pornography, it becomes an addiction as much as a drug addiction. Three to six percent of people in America have a full-scale pornography addiction where they watch up to 12 hours of pornography a week. We have seen in testimony in court that the sexual craving for something more has gotten so bad that it has inspired people like serial killer and rapist Ted Bundy. The night before his death, Bundy was interviewed by Dr. James Dobson, the founder of Focus on the Family. In one segment, Bundy told Dr. Dobson about the effect his pornography addiction had on his life. Like most other kinds of addiction, he said, I would keep looking for more potent, more explicit, more graphic kinds of material. Like an addiction, you keep craving something which is harder, harder, something which gives you a greater sense of excitement until you reach the point that pornography only goes so far. Bundy added, 
I've lived in prison a long time now. I've met a lot of men who are motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography. Without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by addiction to pornography. FBI statistics show they find pornography at the scene of 80% of violent sex crimes. Not every person that views pornography is a violent sex criminal. But this and Ted Bundy's statement show that this is where it can lead. And yet we see pornography everywhere. The Christmas classic Home Alone has a scene where eight-year-old Kevin McAllister finds a Playboy magazine in his brother's room and is checking out the pictures as if it's no big deal. What is not discussed is the dark places that pornography takes your mind. If you struggle with pornography, I want you to know there is hope in overcoming your struggle. Right now is the time to turn your life around and be free. God wants to set you free from your addiction and he is powerful enough to do just that. In Tyler's testimony about his struggle with pornography, the beauty was in his victory over his struggle with the helping power of Jesus. Not only did giving up pornography bring him closer to Jesus, but it helped heal his marriage. Tyler's story can be your story too. If you turn to Jesus and give him your life, he can help you overcome your struggles too and give you a life without the guilt and complications that go hand in hand with pornography. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. I want you to focus daily on self-control. God can help you with this, even though it may be difficult. Consider getting an accountability partner that you trust to help you stay focused and faithful to your commitment. You might think that you won't be able to get these habits out of your mind. Here's a Bible verse I want to remind you of, Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. God promises to renew your mind, to help your mind get a fresh start with Him. Part of your challenge is to guard your thoughts. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your focus on helping other people. Spend time in God's Word, and that will be your inspiration for your thoughts. Trust God that He can help you, and it will bring you the peace you so desperately need. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. I'm going to put some resources in the description below if you would like to get help in your life in this area. May God give you victory in your struggle, and when you're tempted to make excuses, don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big your God is. I'm Jamie Houghton with 832.